Hey YouTube, today is going to be a video about picking footwear for off-grid living. Um, I'm going to get right into the meat and potatoes here. It all starts with your socks. Um, a lot, of, like a lot of people, you know, in the summertime, if you're somebody that lives in the city, maybe you have this dream of moving out to an off-grid cabin, or maybe you're sort of just starting to get your arrangements. If you're wearing cotton socks, just don't. Not worth it. They're they hold moisture even in the summer. Uh, cotton socks are very popular because they're thin. They tend to be light, breathable. Not breathable, but they tend to uh, be a little bit more airy. I guess is what I was trying to say. Uh, but when your feet start start to sweat, that sweat's going to build up. It can cause uh, foot issues like funguses, foot fungus. Um, it can cause uh, blisters from the sweating. Cause it to be a bit more abrasive. Um, and then in winter, uh, you'll have those problems. Plus you have the problem of your feet getting cold because they're wet, um, from your sweat. Uh, you start, you sweat, you die. That's pretty much my understanding. And I see it pretty much true. If I'm sweaty outside, I tend to get very cold in the winter if I'm sweaty. Um, but back to the, back to the socks, get some good socks. I would honestly, if you're moving off grid, chuck all your cotton socks and buy yourself a bunch of pair of wool socks. Uh, now I know maybe what you're thinking, oh, it won't wool be too warm in the summer and you'll get sweaty feet in the summer. Well, yeah, but the thing about wool is that it tends to wick moisture a lot better so than cotton. So even if you have some thick wool socks, and you can get thin wool socks, but even if you have thick wool socks, which I wear wool socks throughout the entire summer, and I've never gotten blisters with wool socks in the summer. Um, I just never have just blisters in general with wool socks doesn't matter how much walking running or whatever i was doing hiking if i have wool socks on my feet don't get blisters and they stay relatively dry they don't get soaked with moisture like you would with cotton socks so it all starts with socks get yourself some wool socks that's pretty much rule number one um you can always get the fancy thin fabric or thin it's like a polyester or something uh it's usually some sort of uh oil-based blend of fibers uh, for summertime. Maybe they, they probably have winter stuff that's the same. That's all, that's modern day stuff. I'm gonna tell you that probably, I don't know from experience, but my guess is that the wool socks are gonna last longer. Um, a great option for wool socks, as you might be wondering, um, I would recommend is Smart Wool. These are Smart Wool socks. They come with a lifetime uh, warranty. So you buy these socks, you hold on to that receipt, you get a hole in the sock, you can go and get a brand new pair, no questions asked. Um, so Smart Wool is great. Uh, you can always get some fancier uh, socks. I have this pair of green Icelandic, I think it's called Icelandic is the brand. Uh, they're massive wool socks. They're almost knee high. Um, and they're, they're, well, they're all the way up to knee, so they're knee high. And they're great, really warm socks and they're rated to minus uh, 45 degrees Celsius. Um, how true that is, I don't know. My feet haven't been cold in them. And even though my feet will be super warm in them, I don't really notice any moisture building up. Um, so I don't need to take my word for it, whatever. But socks, wool socks. Uh, then the next thing is there isn't just one pair of shoes that are going to cover all your bases and all your needs when you're living off grid. We live in the 21st century. So we have options. We don't have to wear you know, uh, skin uh, or leather shoes or whatever all the time or boots, you know, fur boots and hide boots. We don't need to do that. Um, so picking your footwear, uh, you should be keeping in mind the tasks that you'll be doing with that footwear. Um, so pick a footwear that's appropriate to the task. So, so, task. so if you are splitting wood, pick up some work boots. If you're living off grid, you'll probably be doing a lot of woodwork um, wood, wood, car, wood, not wood carving, woodwork as in splitting, maybe doing some bushcraft stuff, you know, maybe making saw, um, um, saw horses, who knows what, right. But whatever you're doing when you're constructing, whenever you're splitting wood, whenever you're doing anything that is per potentially dangerous to your toes, you should be wearing work boots. Um, the only, like, I mean, it, it's just self-explanatory. We live in the 21st century. If you got access to, to buy some work boots, maybe buy one or two pairs, two pairs if you're going to be uh, unable to get resupply for a while, um, you know, depending on where you're located. If you're able to just hop in your car and leave your off-grid cabin, go to a store and pick up some work boots, well, you just need one pair. Um, you can always learn how to maintain them. Shugu's great for that. 
Anyway, point is though, appropriate footwear for the task. So work boots for work. And then in the summer, you can use your hikers, hiking boots for hiking or just going back and forth uh, longer distances. Say you're hauling water, you can wear these. These are great for that. Even if you, maybe you're doing some lighter duty, you know, chopping with an ax or not chopping, more or less falling trees with an ax. And you, you know, maybe you got to walk further distances to get that wood. Uh, or maybe you're bringing wood back and forth. You could wear these. Um, obviously, there's going to be a risk involved. So don't say any, and don't say that I told you to do that because I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, be smart. Um, but you could definitely wear these for those lighter tasks. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of wood stuff, get yourself, so, you know, and use those. Use your, wear the extra few pounds that it is on your feet to bring back that log or to chop down that tree. Um, and then when it comes to uh, uh, like just daily tasks around your cabin, maybe you just got to run out real quick. Um, maybe you need to grab something that you forgot outside. Maybe you need to grab your axe to bring it inside to sharpen it or, you know, something like that. Uh, personally, I wear these for collecting water, but it's just running shoes, running shoes. I wear these things. In, I wear my shoes into the ground. All these shoes here. It's not like I have a shoe collection in the back. It's just each one's appropriate for a different task and I'll wear through them until they're, they're garbage and then I'll probably just use what I have. Well, still here, that also does the same thing. Maybe not the exact same type of shoe, but it'll work for the, for the task. Um, but yeah, you can wear your runners um, for you know light duty tasks. Maybe you just got to run out to use the washroom. Throw these on, go use your outhouse. So... They're good for just lighter duty tasks. Um, they're always just handy to have on hand. Handy to have on hand. <laughs> but uh, yeah, runners, why not, right? They don't take up much room. If you're a stationary at an off-grid cabin, I mean, I'm thinking you should have a little enough room to store a pair of runners, and I'm sure you'll find them handy. Um, and uh, for winter, we're actually getting into winter here. Um, winter boots. Uh, these are winter boots. They're advertised as such. Um, they're by a brand called Golden Retriever ba Brand. I don't even know. I've tried looking for these all over the web. Couldn't even find them. I don't know if these were some sort of Chinese knockoffs or whatever. But they're used Thinsulate. I hate Thinsulate. It's terrible. It does not hold heat. I don't care what anybody says. It does not hold heat. These are great spring and fall time boots. They've got a high... Um, they had a high waterproof resistance all the way up to pretty much this this flap here starts right about this flap starts right about here so you can go into mud or water that's pretty much up to you know you're, you're almost to your ankle height um and you'll, you'll be dry so they're good they got their they got their purpose so fall and summer I, I, thinsulate's fine or not fall and summer fall and spring and thinsulate's fine It'll get you where you need to go. Your feet won't be cold because it's not too cold outside. But if it's cold outside, you know, maybe invest in some really, like, warm winter boots. Um, but I do have another solution instead of buying those boots. But I'll get to that later. But, yeah, spring and fall, summer boots. These work. You can always double up your wool socks in those, too. Um, and I'll just make a quick side point here. Uh, if you're going to be buying boots for winter... Get a size up from your current size, or when you go to buy your shoes or boots, make sure that you can fit two pairs of wool socks in those boots comfortably. And what I mean by that is you just double up on your socks and put in your shoe, put your foot into the shoe or the boot, and just make sure that it fits. That's just, you know, to make sure that you've got that extra layer, and also make sure maybe may be comfortable with just one pair, because you don't always want to wear two pairs of socks. Um... Next, I'm going to get into indoor footwear. These are what I wear in the winter indoors. These are mucklucks. These are moose hide mucklucks uh, with a canvas upper uh, from uh, the Yukon. My uncle sent me these. He lives up there full time. Lucky bastard. But um, anyway, he sent me these. And they're great for inside the cabin. They're absolutely fantastic. Your feet are warm. You can go to sleep with them on and wake up. And you're, you don't want to put your feet in some cold shoes or boots. And they're great. Um, they hold heat very well, uh, especially since these ones have a felt liner, which was bought um, after the fact. Um, he said he picked this up from Walmart. I'm sure Walmarts in the Yukon have a bit different of things than here in the South. Um, 
south of Canada. But, you know, if you can pick up a couple felt liners, throw those in something like a pair of mucklocks, and you've got a great winter boot. Um, the only thing about this is that you can't really wear them uh, in wet snow. In wet snow, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll get damp, they'll soak the water up, they'll wreck the hide, um, your feet will get wet, you'll be uncomfortable, you won't have a good time. So, the best thing that I can recommend um, for that, so to, so to make a solution for that, um, oh, quick, another quick thing about these, um, only wear them in dry snow. Um, so where I am, minus 25, that's dry snow. Um, it's very humid, I've got a river right beside my property that's constantly, there's always water coming off that thing. Uh, moisture, the, just the humidity level around where I live tends to be always between 80 and 100%. It doesn't tend to ever go down below that. Uh, there's like three or four rivers going around my area. So it's always humid. Um, so anyway, point is, don't wear these in humid snow. You'll ruin the leather if you do get the pair. Um, and yeah. Now, if you do pick up a pair of these, and this is my personal favorite combo, and you don't feel like really going and buying... Um, you know, winter boots in specific, um, a great thing to get is some Neos. Neos are fantastic. They're super lightweight. Uh, these are actually made for dress shoes. So you'd put either an over boot. So basically what would happen is, is you would take, um, I'll just show you. So say this is a dress shoe and this is what I do. Say this is a dress shoe go on to your office building or fancy thing you don't want to get your shoes all dirty because you just put a beautiful shine on them so you just throw now you wouldn't do it like this you can just step into them uh, but i'm trying to show you but you just put them on like that they're completely waterproof completely waterproof all the way up they're, they've got a waterproof interior inside um and you can just put your boot in that close it up and then you're good to go they're super light they've got a nice big tread on them um, they're not super grippy on ice though, so not the best for ice, although if you're on ice, you should be wearing crampons anyway. Um, and yeah, you can just tie them up. They've got a little bit of a buckle system here. And then you can, you can tighten them right up. And there you go. Now you've got a winter boot. It's snug. Um, it's warm because you've got mucklucks on the inside. Uh, and you could actually honestly use these with the felt liner. They oftentimes, these ones, these Neos came with a bit of a, a heel spot for heel dress shoes, right? But you can just take some felt and cut out some little pieces of felt and shove them in to that uh, indent. Um, so that's, that's my winter boot. These are my winter boots. If I'm going outside and it's going to be wet snow, I'll wear these over top of my mucklucks. If it's dry snow, minus 25 I just wear the mucklucks with some wool socks and the felt liner and I'm warm. Uh, you could also wear these in not as cold temperatures with some wool socks and a felt liner just in these, although I find that to be a, a bit loose on my feet, but that's probably just specific to this pair of Neos and the size that these are. Although they fit great with the felt liner and the mucklucks inside the Neos. Um, so that's pretty much my winter boots all you know task specific boots uh shoes whatever appropriate to it's got to be you know your boots and your shoes got to be appropriate to the task that you're going to be doing it doesn't take long to change your shoes go back inside if you go outside with your running shoes and you say hey maybe i'd like to split some wood well don't be an idiot like i was and not go inside and change your shoes because this is what happens when you don't you get a beautiful scar i don't know if you can see that you get a nice scar to remind you not to be an idiot um, and wear, you know, wear running shoes while trying to split rotten fucking well, firewood. Excuse my language. Um, but rotten firewood and end up having to go to the hospital. Not fun. Um, but, uh, yeah. We'll get into there's two things here I miss. So I'll just do those quickly. These are great for in the summer. They're just indoor shoes. Uh, why wear shoes indoors in the summer? Your floor is probably dirty. Um, so just wearing these keeps your socks cleaner for longer and you might be able to stretch a pair of socks out two days Because um, laundry is a pain off grid Just don't say I didn't tell you if you do this laundry is a pain off grid <laughs> um, And another thing that you might not be thinking about 
is, well, when you're living off grid, there's no reason you can't be clean. Now, you probably noticed, like, I'm shaven, trimmed, whatever. I look, you know, I try to be presentable, um, even though, you know, it's mostly just for me and my morale. So what I do is I just heat up a bucket, or not a bucket, a pail of water. I'm uh, not a pail, a pot of water, put it into a pail when it's warm. And I go out and I bathe. I rinse myself with the warm water and some soap. I do it quick, you know. I only need about four liters and maybe about three minutes to clean up and be smelling good and fresh. Uh, but I'm wearing sandals when I do that. Sandals. And you might be thinking, oh, that's dangerous. You know, you could freeze, you get frostbite, hypothermia, blah, blah, blah. If it's minus 30 and you're outside and you're moving around, you're only out there for three minutes and you've got hot water on you that's steaming off because it's not freezing right away, you're going to be fine. You're not going to die from that short of an exposure. You're not going to get hypothermia. Maybe you'll get a bit of ice forming on your hair or whatever. But that's all just going to evaporate and dry as soon as you get inside anyway. So just make it short and sweet. Do what you got to do. Don't make it, don't try to stretch it out. This isn't, you know, a bath in a typical 21st century home when you're doing this or a shower for that, for the matter. Um... But yeah, some sandals are great, 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 great. And water shoes if you live in an area with sharp bottoms or things in the water that you don't know what. Uh, but yeah, I wear sandals when I bathe, so that's why I have them. Uh, but that pretty much covers all the boots and shoes that you probably would ever really want or need at a off-grid uh, cabin. Um, the only other thing I could think is if you are going to be close to a town and do have a way to get there, and maybe you got a girlfriend you want to impress her once in a while. Put aside a nicer pair of clothing. Just keep it. You don't wear it unless you're going out into town. And maybe a nice pair of shoes for that. Because, um, you know, the world doesn't stop because you're living on an off-grid cabin. Maybe you got to go to a wedding, a funeral. Or maybe even you got to just go and take a girl out on a date because you're a guy. And you just, you know, you got to get laid. Yeah, that word. <laughs> you got to get laid. Um, tried to catch myself there, but doesn't work hopefully youtube doesn't uh if i catch this in the algorithm but anyway that's about it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching Till next time take care have fun and be safe